Namaste. Namaste. Today I'm here with Magda. I met her two years ago in Thailand when she started her nomad journey and uh, we are in South Goa and uh, I'm really happy that Magda wants to share something with us. I'm happy to be here talking about the nomad experience. I very much identify as a nomad because yoga plus nomad equals yoga. That's, that's what we do. That's who we are. That's what we do. Yeah, I'm grateful to be here. Yes, so do you want to tell us how your journey started? Well, sure. I always dreamt of traveling and I was a single mother for 18 years in California. And so when my daughter finally graduated high school, uh, at this, within the same two years of my daughter graduating high school, both of my parents passed away. So I took care of all my major responsibilities with those three people, the biggest, most people that I love most in my life took care of them um, and then I was free and so when my daughter graduated high school and um, both my parents passed and I was free to travel and so that's what I did so that's where I started so I've been teaching already yoga for about eight years at that point I've been practicing yoga for 20 years I started uh, when I was pregnant with my daughter and um, so now I've been teaching 10 years and two of those years have been traveling all over the world where have you been? Where have I been? I've been to uh, Thailand, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, India. India was the first place I came. I was like, okay, I'm a yogi. It's time to go to the motherland. I came to India first. I went to Thailand. I went to Bali. Um, then I've gone all over Europe, uh, mostly Western Europe. Mm -hmm. So Spain, Italy, France, and um, Morocco. I was teaching in Morocco uh, last year, and that was a great experience. So yeah, those, those are the places I've gone so far. Nice. Mm -hmm. And there are more on your list? Yeah. Um, I want to spend more time in Thailand. Um, I want to go to South America. Mm -hmm. I've never been to South America, so you know it's a big wide world out there. There's lots of places. The Maldives is high on my list, and we're close there now. Yes. Uh, seems to be a lot of yoga there. Yeah. Um, so and I'm, I'm all about the, like you, we're not just yomads, we're also mermaids, right? <laughs> so we need to also be near the sea. For me, it's very important, sun yeah. and sea. So this is part of why I've chosen this lifestyle is so that in between teaching and working on my own private projects, I'm pretty much near the sea. Yeah, yeah. that's not a bad one. Sounds really good. I think the next place that we're going to move is in Bali and afterwards South Bali. Okay, let's make a plan. So, um, can I ask you, how do you sustain your life while traveling? <laughs> That's the tricky part. Um, teaching, you know, teaching for the most part. I also have private clients that I do life coaching and uh, different kinds of coaching. But uh, yeah, a couple private clients and then teaching wherever I go has been sustaining me for the last couple of years. Yeah. And then is it easy for you when you just arrive at a new place? And then, hey, here I am and I'm going to teach, or how, how do you usually get your clients? How do you get your classes? Um, it's kind of different everywhere I go, but I'm in, I'm in a flow, and I started this way and I continue this way, and so far it works for me, of just surrendering and showing up with intention, with an intention to share yoga, and knowing that my integrity and my heart is in the right place. And trusting that I will be supported and provided for and that I will be given the opportunities that I'm seeking and so far it's happened you know I, I I magically meet people who say oh you know maybe I should introduce you to this person mm -hmm. or oh are you looking for work yeah come with me you know and it's just that I'd like to say it this way like the path lights up in front of me you know and I'm in surrender I'm not planning where I'm gonna be a year from now I have some offers, you know, and I'm considering, and I also, I also weigh and consider where do I want to be and how do I want to spend my energy. And fortunately, so far, I haven't really had to do any jobs that I really didn't want to do. Uh, I've been happy in every job that I've done, and so far, I've been provided for. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's the universe. Yeah, I feel very supported by the universe, and anytime I, I doubt it, you know, it's like I've got my my practices, my own personal sadhana is very strong. You know, I have almost two hours of sadhana in the morning and I'm 
chanting to Lakshmi for my abundance and I'm chanting to Ganesha to move the obstacles out of the way, you know, meaning, you know, whatever obstacles are in my head mainly because I know that we live in an abundant universe. So I, you know, I, I got my posse with me. I got my team, <laughs> my cosmic team. And, <laughs> and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm diligent and I'm disciplined in my own practice. And that's what keeps me on the path of moving forward. Do you think as a nomad, yoga yoga teacher traveling the globe, it's really important to still keep practicing and studying? Oh yeah, I'm, I, everywhere I go I'm as much a student as I am a teacher. Um, I really like to do both. I like to go to other people's classes and workshops and festivals and take as many classes from other teachers as I can to continue being a student and learning, expanding my toolkit and repertoire and wisdom and knowledge um, and also teaching, yeah, so, so definitely. Yeah. What would you say was your highlight since ever since you started uh, oh, to be a yomad? I don't know. Let's see. Well, there were probably plenty, but two, there's so many. That's the thing. It's been two years, uh, just over two years now, actually. And uh, what's the highlight? I don't know. It depends how you define things. I mean, I can't choose one. Okay. Probably meeting me in India. Maybe. Yeah, the bottle <laughs> beach, back where this all started. <laughs> yeah, that's that great. was a highlight, actually. It really was. We were on this pristine, tiny little beach, frolicking around doing yoga and taking pictures. And, <laughs> and, and with the beach hut, that was the first time I stayed in a hut that was like, ah. you walk right out the door and your feet are in the sand. Like, that, that was a good moment for me. That was right at the beginning. So, you know, I, it's hard to say. I've been going to these amazing festivals around the world as well, which are always exciting. And then I circle back to California sometimes and go teach at a festival there and, you know, visit my friends. And they ask, are you moving back? No. <laughs> no, <laughs> no way. When are you coming home? Um, I am home. You know, home is where my feet are standing, like my yoga mat is home. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's where it's at now. Oh, perfect. Do you have any advice, any any suggestion for the people out there? My favorite advice for all people, <laughs> regardless of what your goal in life is, is uh, Patavi Joyce. Practice and all is coming. Because when you're true to yourself, when you're in your own truth, everything else makes sense. Everything else unfolds. Like you find the peace of mind and the inspiration You know, you're in the flow of life when you're in your own practice. When you do your own practice, practice and all is coming. That just keeps your your radar tuned to truth so that you keep going in the right direction. Yeah. You know, so just practice, practice, practice. Share yoga with anyone who will listen to you. This is exactly what the world needs. Yes. And make sure that you're doing it for yourself first and foremost. You fill up your own cup and then you have enough to share with others. That's really nice. What was the biggest challenge for you? Because there are a lot of challenges. Yeah. What was the biggest challenge for you? The biggest challenge. Um, it's probably keeping a positive mindset. You know, when it gets scary, maybe when the work isn't there, or you know, the flight doesn't work out, or you know, when when the challenges come up, the biggest challenge is to keep the positive mindset and practice what I preach, right? And take that deep breath and trust you know i i constantly feel like i'm jumping off a cliff yeah. you just have to remember to spread your wings and just know that the wind is there so it's keeping the faith is the biggest challenge but that's practice and all is coming right it circles back to that so that that's my biggest challenge i mean sometimes it i have i have slipped into the the lack of consciousness mindset you know where it's like okay, well that job, I thought it was going to work out and then it didn't work out. Or if I get offered a big job and I'm like, yay, there's all the, everything I've been praying for, you know, and then it gets taken away, this has happened. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, okay. So here's the test, right? Can I still stay positive despite that shift yeah. in the external reality? My internal reality, the point is, the challenge is for my internal reality not to be changed by external circumstances and to continue trusting and And the way that I come back to it and the way that it works is that I know that I'm living my truth and I'm, I, I'm expressing 
from my heart. Like I'm doing what I was born to do. You know, I mean, this is my third career. Yoga is my third career, and it's my last one because I found my home in yoga, and I, I don't want to do anything else now. So this is. I just know I'm on the right path. I know that I'm, I'm doing what I'm meant to do, and that I'm being a beneficial presence on the planet, and that's what's most important to me. So I I know that I'm supported. So just continually. Uh, staying in that mindset is is the biggest challenge. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And do you think that uh, the things you did before, the Karis Bikwa, I know she was a photographer, mm -hmm. that it's supportive for the things you do now? Or? Oh, totally. Totally. Every, and, and I can look back and see the divinity in my life path, mm -hmm. you know? I was a photographer since I was 14. I definitely use those skills in my marketing now. Mm -hmm. um, having that skill is really a big deal. I use that in lots of ways uh, and then I had a fashion line I had an actual proper business I was in fashion and retail uh, for a decade and that taught me business you know and that taught me how to make spreadsheets and like all this the business side of things like I have that experience now as well yeah. so I have the artistic experience the you know the eye for marketing and designing and then I have the business experience so it's like it's all building and then I also lived in France and I learned French and that's been an asset as well because it's teaching in France and teaching in French in France like that was amazing yeah. because I could you know so it's like all my life experience leading up to this point is the foundation you know? wow. it wasn't wasted time you know it was necessary for me to be where I am now and to be supported in what I'm doing now and have the patience and the trust <laughs> the skills yeah Good. Is there anything more you want to share? <laughs> How long do we have? <laughs> I, as long as I, want to, I want to talk all day about yoga. <laughs> um, yeah, I also I have a podcast, and that's another thing that I do on my travels as well, and that helps me network. I go to festivals, and I interview all these amazing people and teachers and thought leaders and things, and that's another thing that I do to, uh, to network and to create relationships uh, with people who are maybe farther along the path than I am and who have a lot of wisdom to share and they've been great teachers for me so my audience learns right along with me you know I'm learning from these teachers when I do these interviews and that's that's been an, a, a nice um, project to have also because it, it's a continual thing that's ongoing and it gives me like a point of focus and it also gives me access to you know festivals and people that I wouldn't necessarily just be able to sit down at a table and have a conversation with. So having, uh, I think having some skills or doing something, uh, some kind of a media project or something on the side um, is also a good idea because it's a way to kind of branch out and expand your, your networking ability and whatnot and also your knowledge. So surely you should check out her podcast. I'm really inspired by Magda. Um, you meet plenty of people, so many uh, inspiring souls. Um, but Magda is for me actually really one. I keep on bumping at any place <laughs> in the world into her. And um, there might be a retreat also up, up coming up. So Yeah, summer in the south of France. I'm putting that together with summer in the south of France. So basically I go to my favorite places and figure out where I want to be. And then I set up a retreat and invite people there to hang out with me. So this is actually what uh, you might be doing, good in community, that you can actually find a place where you always wanted to be and just do what you always wanted to do. Yeah, voila.